Woohoo! My coffee. Hey guys, it's DT and I am back finally with another Lego video. That's right, today we are taking a look at the Lego Batcave Shadow Box. This is set 76252. It's 3,981 pieces and it's recommended for ages 18 and up. And batteries are included with this one. You guys know I'm a big comic book and Batman fan, so I'm really excited for this set. As you can see, it's a combination between a display piece and also a play set. So if you're looking for something cool that you want to display on a shelf or something you want to play with, this might be the set for you. Over here, we can see the seven minifigures that come with the set. This set is based on Batman Returns from 1992. So we get a lot of cool characters from that movie. The Christopher Walken Max Shrek, the Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman, two different Michael Keaton Batman, along with Bruce Wayne, Alfred, and the Danny DeVito Penguin. If we turn this thing around, we can see inside the set, uh, the whole thing opens up to reveal the interior of the Batcave, complete with a Batmobile. In its closed up display form, it's 11 inches tall and 20 inches wide. We can see some of the play features here, little pieces that rotate, doors that open and close, hidden compartments, and even a place for the Batmobile to exit the Batcave. So uh, let's go ahead, open this up, and show you guys what's inside. Inside we have some more boxes along with a few bags. So on top, bag 19, bag 25, 23, 24, 28, 14, 27, 16, 22, 18, 20, 15, 26, 21, 14, 16, 29, and 17. So it looks like all these loose bags are for later in the build and we'll be starting off with the ones in this box. And we can't forget about our instructions which come in four different booklets. I'll save you the torture of me reading off the numbers of these bags. This is everything right here. Almost forgot. We also get some stickers. So uh, Let's build the Batcave. Okay, so here it is, the completed Lego Batcave Shadow Box. Very unique set, but before we get into the details of that, let me talk about these minifigures. So we get seven minifigures all together. The first one is this guy right here, Batman. We actually get three different versions of Bruce Wayne, and this is the one with the sculpted cape. He's got the cape and cowl all in one piece. We can't turn his head just like Michael Keaton in the Batman movie. And we also can't fit him into a lot of places because his cape is not very flexible. I believe they updated the printing on this one a bit and I believe you can also get it in a poly bag set. We got the one version here with the face with the little goggles on top which uh, give the Batman with the cowl the white eyes. And then on the other side we've got kind of his normal Bruce Wayne face. And we also get this exact same face in the other two Bruce Waynes in the set. So if you lose one, you got two more. Then we have the alternate suit. And it's kind of cool that we get the alternate suit because this cape is the fabric cape, which is a lot more flexible. Uh, we can fit it into the car. We can fit it into the chair. And I think it's the best of both worlds between having the sculpted cape and the old papery type capes that would get all crunched up. So not a whole lot unique about this minifigure except the cape, the cowl, and the little blue head that he is holding in his hand. So you use the blue head if you want to display this guy as just being an empty suit. This is a dual molded cowl. Since they did create a separate piece, it would have been nice if they had uh, the regular eyes 
uh, like the movie, where you can actually see the eyes with the black makeup around them. But we get the white eyes here, which is how we're used to seeing Batman in these Lego sets. So we've got two different Batman options, and then we get our Bruce Wayne. So Bruce is very cool. Again, he's got the same exact face. Then he's got his suit jacket, which has some nice printing on it. He's holding a little coffee mug. And then we have this nice little hair piece on him. And then we get Mr. Shrek. No, not that Shrek. This is Max Shrek, played by Christopher Walken. And I believe this is the very first Lego minifigure, Christopher Walken. It sort of looks like Christopher Lloyd, uh, being that they use the same hair that they use for Doc Brown, but I guess rather than come up with a different hair for Mr. Shrek, they thought this one was close enough. He's got a frowny face, nice little uh, pinstripe suit, top hat, and a cane. Here we have the Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman. She's got some nice printing on her face and her torso with all that little white stitching. Just like in the movie, she's got the little headpiece with the little ears. Her legs do not have any printing, however, and neither does anyone else in this set for that matter. But she does come with a nice little whip. And then we've got Alfred. Alfred's got his standard butler attire, his little bow tie, black jacket, white shirt. Uh, he's got a mug and he's also got a little coffee kettle on a platter. He's got two faces, however, they are very similar to each other. One, he's kind of got a little smile on his face, and the other one, he looks a little bit worried. And then finally, we get a Danny DeVito penguin, and I believe this is the first Danny DeVito minifigure that we've seen as well. He's got the short legs, some nice printing on his torso. He's got this little fur collar piece that goes on his neck, and this uh, creepy little face with the top hat. And he's also got a cool little umbrella accessory as well as a fish. So uh, that's gonna do it for the minifigures. A pretty cool assortment of minifigures. Pretty much everything you need if you wanna recreate some of the scenes from this movie. Moving on to the first thing we build, which is the Batmobile. This of course is the 1992 Batmobile and it is looking really good. This one seems very sturdy and looks pretty accurate to the Batmobile in the movie. Uh, looks really good inside. We've got a steering wheel, a bunch of different controls and gauges, and our little stickers on there, and then one seat for Batman. This one's got a little flame coming out of the back, and when you roll it, it actually turns. We've also got a removable cockpit hood here, and we can stick Batman in there. You can either take off his cape, or you can kind of just scrunch this one up a little bit. Fits in there nicely. You can cover him back up and off he goes. And then one other very cool feature of this is the little knob here in front. We can twist off and out come the guns. So very cool Batmobile. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Here is a look at the outside right now. We've got this Batman symbol cut out right here in front. It kind of gives us a glimpse into the Batcave. And then we have some buttons on the back. So each of these yellow buttons is in charge of a specific play feature. And then we've got these little black little stoppers on the back. Uh, so you can put it up, I guess, against a wall or something. Uh, Might have been cool if they had some kind of way to hang it on the wall. But uh, because this whole thing is brick built, I'm not too sure how sturdy that would be. The whole thing is pretty heavy. I think they did a really good job with the shape of the Batman here, how they got all the little curves. It's not perfect, but it is a cave. You expect to have some kind of jagged edges here and there. I know one criticism people had was that it's a little bit dark. That kind of goes for everything Batman, right? But uh, they did try and remedy that a little bit with these uh, light gray pieces right here to kind of outline the edges. The whole thing just opens up like a big book. Just like that. If you notice, uh, the Batmobile's on here, but there's not enough room for the little flame on the back. Luckily, there is a place to store that flame. It's right here on the back. We just lift up on the little handle, and we can put an assortment of accessories in there, like extra heads, weapons. It's in there for safekeeping. So once you remove that little flame piece, fits on there rather nicely. Which brings us kind of to our first play feature, which is the little garage door here on the back. Uh, we can lift it up until it locks in place. 
And then the Batmobile can actually enter or exit via this little garage door. And then once it's inside, there's a little button here on the back we can push and it shuts the garage door. Pretty nifty. This is the main side where we have all the Batcave action. We've got the control room. We've got a nice little platform with a bunch of different computers, computer screens, lots of little stickers that we have to put on. And then we have these three screens in the middle. We've got a large screen with two smaller screens on the top. And if we turn the knob, we can have Batman surveilling Catwoman. And then if we turn it, the whole thing changes to a penguin scene. Not only do we get to change the big screen, but we also get to change the two smaller screens up on top as well. So that's just one big sticker on one big piece. And then we also have Bruce Wayne on his chair. And this chair is kind of cool too because it's another play feature and it can rotate 360 degrees. You can't recline it too much, otherwise Bruce is gonna hit. Woohoo! I'm spilling my coffee. Spins this way, spins that way. It's kind of like a little carnival ride. Then we've got a bunch of ladders and stairs to bring us to the different platforms. We also have a little railing here as well. Although there is no railing right here in the middle where Bruce is sitting. So if he gets up from his chair without realizing where he is, he could fall. Uh, my coffee. Minimal safety here at the Batcave. We come up to the middle section. Here we have another play feature. In this little door, we have a little porthole where we can see the Batman suit. And if we turn the knob, the chains lower, the little drawbridge comes down to reveal the Batman suit. To illuminate the bat suit, we have this little light brick and it shines a little orangey light on the back of it. So it's kind of cool how this chain kind of just wraps around this rod. And then we come up here to the top level and we have this bat vault. And this one, when you turn the knob, the double doors slide open to reveal an assortment of batarangs. And we also have a grappling hook gun. Down below, we have a little bat tool shed. Everything we need to make repairs on our Batmobile. We've got wrenches, hammers, power drills, screwdrivers, uh, socket wrenches, oil cans, you name it. And then around the entire bat cave, we've got kind of this uh, rock structure. We've got the stalagmites, the lag tights, some little lights and support structures up on top. Uh, these little Technic pins kind of connect on this side so everything lines up nicely. Stalagmites and stalactites utilize these little unicorn pieces. Very similar build we see throughout this thing. And then uh, down here on the bottom, we've got the penguin. I don't know if that's a little bat jail or maybe the penguin's just hiding out there waiting to make his attack. Uh, another cool thing about the little bat garage is this cool bat symbol up here. This is all made out of little pieces and uh, I thought it was very clever. One of my favorite parts of the build while I was building, I didn't really know what I was building, but uh, once you start putting the pieces together, you're like, ah, oh, it's a bat symbol. Down here on the platform, we have all these little lights as well as some nice detailing around the sides and bottom. And then we come over here to our last panel. This is kind of just like an open play zone. No play features over here, but we do have a nice platform where we can stick minifigures. We do have to be careful about putting minifigures along this edge right here, only because when you close it, uh, they're gonna get smashed by the Batmobile. So we have to keep this area clear when we wanna close this thing up. Same goes for this side over here as well. But uh, this was a pretty fun build, not a whole lot of repetitive building, but I do wanna point out that the hardest part of this build, or at least most tedious, was building uh, the interior wall right here. And as you can see, it's a, like a bunch of different little rocky like structures. You had to really pay attention to the instructions to make sure you were putting the right piece in the right place because it's easy to kind of confuse everything. But once you have it all built, it looks like a rocky wall. But it's kind of funny how this one wall that kind of nobody really looks at is the most difficult part of the set. But uh, the shadow box is pretty much brick built. There are a couple little Technic pieces in there. 
uh, to hold everything together. Uh, the whole top here is this kind of square grate piece. I guess the grate pieces are there to kind of give it a feel that this whole thing is ventilated. <laughs> kind of just closes up. Snaps together. And there you go. So I'm gonna have this set on my shelf just like this. One of the cool things is you can still access the Batmobile. Just take it out from the side like that and put it right back in. So there you go. That was the Lego Batcave Shadow Box. I think it's a very cool set. I know uh, some people weren't too thrilled about having it being a shadow box, but for me who buys Lego sets and builds them to display them, uh, this thing is perfect. It's always nice when there are play features for those who like them. Here it is next to the little minifigure scale tumbler. This thing is pretty cool. It can't fit in the door, unfortunately. Uh, tumbler is a little bit too big for that, but you can kind of display it on the outside if you want, or maybe even on the top here. But uh, here it is next to the big tumbler, but maybe you're like, you can't put a Dark Knight set with a Batman Return set, so We'll take this off and we'll bring this thing in. This would be a very cool setup to have. You got the Batmobile on one side and then the Batcave on the other. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. We've got more Lego videos coming up here on the channel. If you guys want to see more cool Batman and comic book stuff, make sure to check out my channel, DT's Geek Show. I'll leave a link down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.